Hello. You're welcome to another Sunday school video. Today's topic is faith. So before we start today's Sunday school, I want to shout out a couple of people, some of our Sunday school children from home. And the first person we're going to be shouting out is Nathan. Nathan is watching us from Coventry. And I'm going to place a picture that Nathan's mom sent to, to me here to show me that Nathan is always there at one o'clock prompt to watch our Sunday school. Nathan, we love you and we're glad that you can always join us. And Nathan is already in the process of making his wordless book. So are you guys making your wordless book? And his mom is going to send me a picture of that and I'm going to bring, I'm going to show it, I'm going to display it on the screen as well. So if you haven't made your wordless book and you still want to make it, go ahead and make it and send me a picture and I'm going to shout you out on the channel as well. So I want to also wish a happy birthday to two amazing sons of mine who turned plus one over the last few weeks the first person is marcus ametio marcus ametio is a footballer and he's an amazing young man and we celebrate you and we say congratulations and happy birthday to you may god bless you and enlarge you in jesus name and the second person we're going to shout out is best best turned plus one over the last weekend as well and we're super excited for you and happy birthday we wish you God's divine blessings and we wish you God's grace in all of your endeavors hello children welcome again to another Sunday school it's always a pleasure to come to your homes and to reach you every Sunday with a word from God for children so before we start today's Sunday school I want to say hello to Ruby say hello, hello. Okay, so before we start today's Sunday school, we're going to ask Ruth to say a prayer for us before we start. In Jesus' name, thank yeah. you for today. A wonderful day. Let us learn something good. Let you bless every child's heart out there. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 So, our topic for today is faith faith do you know what faith is faith is faith is believing in god okay faith is our belief in god is that what you mean yeah. um yes faith is um our belief in god as children of god you have to believe in God to call yourself a child of God. Is that right? Yes. Good. So faith is that um, virtue that you have to have to become a child of God, to live as a child of God. That is the, you have to, as children of God, we all need to have faith because faith is actually saying that I believe, even though I have not seen, I believe, even though, it doesn't look so good i believe even though um it looks gray and not so bright out there right that's what faith means so let's look at what the bible says about faith we're going to be reading from the book of hebrew chapter 11. are you ready ruth yes which is going to be reading for us and then we're going to try to interpret what god you know what the bible is saying to us Faith is the confidence. Is that first one? Yes. That's Hebrew 11 one. Mm -hmm. Love that rule. Faith is the confidence that we, what we hope for will actually happen. It gives us assurance about things we cannot see. Through their faith, the people in days of old learned, earned a good reputation. By faith, we understand that the entire universe was formed at God's command. That what we now see did not come from anything that can be see, seen. It was by faith that Abel brought a more, more acceptable, acceptable. acceptable offering to God than Cain did. 
Abel, Abel's offering gave evidence, evidence. evidence that he was a righteous man and God showed his approval of his gifts. Although Abel is long dead, he still speaks to us by his example of faith. With that verse 4, we're just going to stop it there because we'll take it one step at a time. So verse 1 says that faith is the confidence that what we hope for will actually happen. Who? 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 Hope. When you hope, is like praying for something that you do not have. And you're just confident that I'm going to have it because, well, my father owns the universe because god is in charge of everything and if you pray believing in god you are sure to receive so faith is that um virtue that you need to have faith is that extra thing you need to have as a child of god to get your answer your prayers answered so because sometimes we pray and we don't believe that god is able to do it so i'm going to give you an illustration right now a story was told of a girl who lived in a village I haven't told you this story but i'm going to tell you now a girl who lived in a village and for a long time they didn't have there was drought the drought means there was no water you know mm -hmm. for a long time and it means crops will not grow and that means there will be famine and there was no food so everybody in the village said we have to pray to god so maybe god can answer us and god can forgive us and then send rain to us so everybody in the village the pastor said we are all going to come out on a saturday or something he fixed a date for them to come out and say prayers right right are you yeah. with me good so and everybody got ready for that day let's say it's going to be tomorrow sunday or saturday and everybody was ready you know on the day of that prayer what the girl took along with her do you know no not her bible she took an umbrella you know why she went with an umbrella no. you don't know why but what have they been praying for, for the rain. yes they have been praying for rain and then she went with an umbrella why because she believed that after this prayer there was going to be yeah. rain so that is faith she has not seen rain and she doesn't even know if there was going to be rain but she just went believing that there was going to be rain and she took an umbrella with her all the other people who were in that village nobody you know there's something about the way we pray as children of course sometimes you pray and just say you pray you know you just pray for the sake of praying but not really believing that god is able to do sometimes we pray some outrageous prayers you know believing god for something that is really really big you know but we don't believe that god can do it for us we just pray because okay when i wake up i need to say a prayer you know okay when i wake up i need to say a prayer normally typically so we wake up and we pray and we just say thank you for the day and all of that as i go out protect me so if something happens we say okay it's fine this is what god planned but when you pray you need to believe it's that belief in your heart that actually moves god to answer your prayers okay yes. so if you're praying to god and asking god for anything for good grades for that bicycle for that game box or for whatever thing as a child you're praying to god for or for protection over your family you have to believe in your heart that god is able to do it for you and then you will see the manifestation so faith is that belief that says yes it's not yet here but i believe that it's going to come so like that little girl she believed okay yeah. so and if you read from hebrew where we read down it talks about it gave a couple of um different example of people who believed in god in the bible and the first person you read was who um abel 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 had faith he trusted remember who was abel's brother his twin brother cain. cain and when they were coming to give a sacrifice to the lord what did cain bring they brought um, vegetables and 
bad vegetables called stale ones and brought them to God because he didn't believe that it was God probably he was like whatever we we're, we're sacrificing to I just want to give whatever you know but because Abel trusted and believed that there was a God that would receive it and that was great that was big that was mighty that had to be revered Abel brought the most beautiful of all of his cattle right his yeah. sheep because he was a shepherd boy so he brought the best of everything to God and God was pleased with his sacrifice and God received his sacrifice and then he refused to take the sacrifice of, of Cain. Cain but he took that of Abel and if you read down God talked about a couple of heroes of faith in the Bible Abraham what did Abraham do to earn that title yeah Abraham believed that he would get a child from God but that was not the reason why the Bible said if you read down Hebrew children I hope you can take time to read Hebrew chapter 11 all through because of time we can go through it the Bible said that Abraham lived with his father where Abraham initially originally was from was the country called or you are Abraham's father Terah took he his family and they moved from or to a land called Haran Haran you know remember so yes. and it was from Haran that God called Abraham out of Haran God told Abraham that leave your family I'm going to take you to a land <laughs> he's going to establish him in another place and start he's going to make a covenant with Abraham and start a new family with Abraham there Abraham became old you know the story of Abraham he was so old he couldn't have given birth to a child but God blessed Abraham with a child because God already gave a promise to Abraham and he had to fulfill that promise by faith Abraham left his whole family we're here in Germany and our whole family is where in Nigeria and sometimes we feel so lonely we feel so like we just want to go back home and be with our families also you know that's how we feel sometimes so I can imagine how Abraham felt when God told him to leave his family that he has been with all of his life to go to a new place because of the faith that Abraham had in God Abraham obeyed God and Abraham moved and at the end of the day Abraham got a child in old age and the lineage of Jesus Christ if you trace it I mean the um, generations you know that came through that eventually became Christ actually came from the seed of Abraham and today we sing most times Abraham's blessings are mine why because by covenant we are children of Abraham as well right so it was faith that distinguished most of these men it was faith that distinguished Abel and then the, the Bible also talked about Enoch that because of the faith faith is the belief that you have in God because Enoch believed and had faith in God in the times where men didn't believe in God the Bible records that Enoch didn't die. He was taken to heaven, right? Yeah. Enoch was taken to heaven. And Enoch was the father of Methuselah. He gave birth to the oldest, to the man that lived the longest on earth, which was Methuselah. So there's always a blessing in believing God. There's always a blessing in serving God. And these heroes of faith in the Bible are there as examples for us to emulate and to live by. So there's another person the Bible talked about if you read Hebrew. I hope you all can read Hebrew. Ruth, you have read through the book of Hebrew chapter 11, right? Yes. Yes. So Sarah, the Bible talked also about Sarah. That when the, the angels told her that she was going to give birth to a child, though she laughed, but she believed. And one year later, she gave, gave birth to that child. And it was also by faith that when Abraham, God told him that even the child that he had given him at old age, that he should sacrifice him to him, to God back. It was by faith Abraham went. And did he die? Did his child die? No. Yes, his child didn't die. Why? Because God had a plan for Abraham. God had a plan for Isaac. God had a plan for the lineage that was going to be born through Abraham. And so God spared the life of, of Isaac. Do you ever imagine what would have happened if Abraham didn't even make that, you know, um, didn't make that, um, didn't take the chance, you know, didn't make the effort to even want to sacrifice him? 
I don't know what would have happened, but it just shows that Abraham had total belief in God. Because if God could have brought him from his family and give him a good land where he lived, you know, for free, you know, and blessed his land and everything, he, he rested in the faithfulness of God that God was able to do more than he could see. And Abraham believed in God. So children, whatever you're believing in God for, if you're believing God for whatever thing that seems like a problem in your life, maybe in your schoolwork, you're not so outstanding or you're not doing so well, just rest in the faithfulness of God that he's able to do it for you like he had done for the others, okay? So believe in God and faith is that extra thing you need. Do you know that sometimes things will not work out the way you want them to work out? It might look like I have just a few hours and if, if this doesn't work the way it's supposed to work, then I mean, you know, you know, maybe you're believing God for something. Maybe you're believing God for, 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 I don't know what it is, children. I don't know what you want God to do for you, but in whatsoever area and you're believing God and it seems like it's not coming. You want a special kind of toy or you just want something. Maybe you want to turn around for your grades and you are working hard, but things are not going. Just hang in there and believe that God is able to do. Sometimes God comes at the last minute just to prove that he's able to do. The Bible says that he's able to do. He said, now to him who is able to do immeasurable more than we can ever ask or think. God has the power in his hands. He owns the whole wild world in his hands. So keep on believing and stay connected to God and God will come through for you in Jesus name. Amen. Now over to our memory verse for this week. And our memory verse for this week is going to be from um, Hebrew chapter 11 verse 6. I'll read it for you. And it is impossible to please God without faith. So without faith, it's impossible to please God. And verse, verse 6b says, Anyone who wants to come to him, that's to God, must believe that God exists and that he rewards those who sincerely seek him. Yes, anyone who wants to come to God must believe that God is and is a rewarder of those who sincerely, diligently seek him. God will reward you for service. That's what the Bible is saying. So without faith, it's impossible to please God. I hope you all can learn this memory verse over the weekend so that you know it and you're able to say it without looking at the Bible. So we have come to the end of today's Sunday School. I hope you found this edifying. I hope you have learned something great today. God bless you all out there. So before we go, I just wanted to show you some things we got over the weekend for the children. Uh, some lovely and wonderful, interesting children Bibles we bought over the weekend. Ta-da! So shout out to shout out to Auntie Gladys for recommending these Bibles to us. So David and Ruth got these new Bibles over the weekend and they have been going everywhere with these Bibles. <laughs> so they have been reading and it's been fun, I guess, right? Can you tell them what you feel about the Bible? Um, it feels really good when we're learning new stuff and new things in the Bible. And I always want to read it and mom always says it's not time. We already read it. Before. I always say it's not a storybook. So this is how beautiful this Bible is. It's for actually for girls. Um, we have. I'm using the front camera to film, so you might be seeing this in a, a mirrored mode. But I see if I can turn this around for you guys to have a good look. So this is Ruth's Bible. It's purple. It's girly. It's for girls. It's actually for children between the age of seven to twelve, or early teenage. Yeah, actually early teenage. This Bible is super, super good. And this is David's own. David's own is it's just a hardcover Bible. It's blue. It's, a, it's for boys. So parents, maybe you want to get this Bible for your children. I'll leave a link below. I'll leave a link at the description box for you so that you can purchase this Bible for your children. It's super exciting. It has a lot of... Um, colorful pages inside there's so many activities for children to do inside you know i'll show you one 
there's so many activities for the children to read inside and it's 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 a fun way to get children to read the bible i recommend it 100 percent so so i'll leave a link and there's a third one for younger children toddlers and we had just ordered that for hannah and the right next week i'm going to do a review of all of the bibles you can check that on our youtube channel and then you will, can make a choice on which one you would be buying so i'll do an exclusive um review of the bible i'll be telling you how much it costs i think this costs 24 euros dollars yeah this costs 24 dollars 24.99 dollars and this is about 39 this is almost 40 40 dollars but it was about 40 euros i'm not sure yes there about i'll put the exact amount on the screen for you all so if you're looking or shopping for bibles for your kids this is a great one for you to shop this is not sponsored at all it's just us sharing our good news with you guys so don't forget make your wordless book for yourself so that you can share the word of jesus with other people so thank you for watching and we will see you in our next one bye hello friends you're welcome to learn the word with the back shall we my heart was dark with sin until the savior came in his precious blood I know has washed me white as snow. And in his book I am told I walk on streets of gold to grow in Christ every day. I read my Bible and pray. Friends, you can also make your wordless book by printing colorful sheets of paper. Colors like black, red, white, yellow or gold, and green. Good luck. Bye. 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 And now we've come to the end of this Sunday school lesson. See you next week.